Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. We learned in the organic chemistry part that the reaction between a carboxylic acid group and a primary amine is an amide. One requirement was the use of heat to remove one molecule of water. A similar reaction takes place between the carboxylic acid end of one amino acid with the amino end of a second amino acid in the presence of enzymes. The product amide is what is called a peptide bond. Because both amino acids have a carboxylic acid end and an amino end, two amino acids can combine to produce two different dipeptides. In the 1930s and 1940s, Linus Pauling and Robert Corey determined the X-ray structures of several amino acids and dipeptides in an effort to investigate the different conformational changes of polypeptide chains. The study showed that the peptide bond exists in two different resonance forms. This is proven because the X-ray structure of the study shows that the carbon-nitrogen bond of a peptide bond is shorter than a carbon-nitrogen single bond in any other organic compound and it is also longer than a carbon-nitrogen double bond of organic compounds. Similar to the family of alkenes, the region around a peptide bond is rigid. However, there is freedom of rotation around the alpha carbon. The only reasonable free movements are rotations around the carbon-nitrogen bond measured as C and the, free, the rotation between the carbon and the carbonyl. The order in which the two ends of amino acids combined is of importance. For example, this carboxylic acid group reacts with the amino end to produce this peptide. If instead this carboxylic acid group reacts with this amino end, the product is this dipeptide. For example, the carboxylic acid end of glycine can combine with the amino end of alanine to produce a dipeptide with one peptide bond where alanine will be the one with the carboxylic acid end and the glycine will be the one with the amino end. A simpler way is the use of the three letters abbreviation, two letter abbreviations, or the two letters without any lines. If instead the reaction is between the carboxylic acid end of alanine and the amino end of glycine, we produce a different dipeptide. We will say that the two dipeptides have different sequences because initially the sequence was glycine alanine, now it is alanine glycine. Now is alanine the one with the amino group and glycine with the carboxylic acid group. We can summarize that when two amino acids combine in the presence of enzymes to make a dipeptide, the sequence of the combination is important because depending on what is the sequence of amino acids, that will determine what is the secondary structure to make alpha helices or beta pleated sheets, and also the tertiary structure that at the same time determines what is the function of the protein. If glycyl alanyl reacts with the amino acid cysteine, two different combinations can produce two different 
tripeptides. In theory, there is a high number of possibilities of combinations for the 20 amino acids in the formation of a polypeptide. But in reality, polypeptides are limited in size and in composition. The repetitive units in the polypeptide is what is called the backbone. This is the alternation between the alpha carbons and peptide bonds. What varies is only the sequence of what are the different residues that are put together in the formation of peptide bonds. By convention, the amino acid sequence is represented from the amino end to the carboxylic acid end. For a polypeptide to be considered a protein, it needs to have at least 40 residues. Smaller ones are called peptides or oligopeptides. 40 amino acids seems to be the number appropriate for a polypeptide to fold on a stable shape to carry out a function. Polypeptides that contain several hundreds of amino acids limit the efficiency of the protein. That is, the longer the polypeptide, which is corresponding to the gene, the greater is the chance to introduce errors during the formation of that protein in translation. This is a peptide with 10 different residues. Many proteins consist of not only amino acids, but will also include metal ions such as zinc, calcium, magnesium, and also will have organic compounds such as hemes, porphyrins, and parts that are important for the functions. The secondary structure of a protein is the arrangement in space of the carbonyl found in the peptide bond with the nitrogen-hydrogen of a peptide bond. This is an interaction via hydrogen bond. There are two different kinds of interactions. There are two kinds of secondary structures, and they are the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet. In an alpha helix, the protein backbone forms a right-handed coil stabilized by hydrogen bonds between the groups every four amino acids. For example, the carbonyl residue number one is in close interaction with the NH of residue number four. That will produce a right-handed coil that resembles the structure of a coiled telephone cord. While the carbonyl is making hydrogen bonds with the NH every four amino acids, the R groups that are attached to the alpha carbons are out of the axis of that alpha helix. Those R groups sticking out of the axis of the alpha helix could participate in non covalent molecular interaction during the formation of the tertiary structure of the protein. This is polar groups will associate to polar groups. Non-polar groups will associate with non-polar groups. As we can see, alpha helices are very symmetric. The top view shows the amino acid side chains are facing the exterior and they are available for non-covalent interactions with other alpha helices or with beta pleated sheets. All alpha helices found 
in proteins are right-handed or clockwise. The second kind of secondary structure is the formation of a beta pleated sheet, in which we will have now a more extended backbone instead of being coiled, and we still have the interaction between carbonyl and NH forming hydrogen bonds, but not necessarily very close like four amino acids apart. In this case, we can have amino acid number five making a hydrogen bond with amino acid number 27. It could be within the same polypeptide or different polypeptides. There are two different kinds of beta pleated sheets. They are parallel when they run on the same direction. They can be represented with the arrows or anti-parallel when they run on opposite directions. The tertiary structure of proteins will use a combination of alpha helices, beta pleated sheets, loops or random coils, disulfide bonds, and others.